All it takes is just one to two A plus setups to make your whole month. Too many traders are accustomed to believing that you need to trade every single day in order to become a successful trader. And that can't be farther from the truth. This week I was able to make over $10,000 in just one single trade being able to identify my A plus setups. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you how you can identify A plus setups and how you can use it to capture these insane moves in the market. So let's get into it. So first I want to talk about what makes an A plus opportunity. What makes an A plus opportunity is when you have a high probability trade thesis. When you have a high probability trade thesis combined with a large risk to reward ratio, that's when you have the best A plus opportunities. And it's basically when the edge is in your favor, right? When the edge is in your favor, you have those clear higher time frame levels on the higher time frames on the daily chart, on the four hour chart. Those are when the market provides its best opportunities when you have those higher time frame levels and when the edge is in your favor, right? That's where you get those crazy moves towards the upside or the downside with continuation as well. What also makes an A plus opportunity is when you have clear higher time frame alignment. This basically means when you trade within a trend. So when you're trading an uptrend, higher highs, higher lows, when you're trading a downtrend, lower highs, lower lows, or potentially when the market's consolidating. But a lot of times when the market's consolidating, there's not going to be any A plus opportunity. Another thing you want to look for is all all time frames are bullish and bearish. This is basically higher time frame alignment. Your best trades are going to occur when the higher time frame is bullish and the lower time frames are bullish. Let's say, for example, you're trading in the opposite direction. You have a higher time frame thesis, but you're trading against the higher time frames, right? The higher time frame is bullish, but you're looking to short intraday. Those are not going to provide the best A plus opportunities. The best A plus opportunities is when the lower time frame is bullish and the higher time frames are bullish as well. And the last thing is you want to be trading within the order flow. So if we have bullish order flow, you want to be trading in alignment with the order flow towards the upside. If there's bearish order flow, you want to be trading towards the downside. So now let's go on to some of the checklists that I look over. So this is the four step checklist that I look coming into the market. So what I want to look for on my A plus setup checklist coming into the pre-market is I want to look for clear draw on liquidity. So this means I'm going to be looking for clear old highs and old lows. This basically means that we have a clear target to either the upside or the downside that we can look to target and for the market to potentially gravitate towards. A lot of times this will be X external levels right we'll be looking for those old highs and old loads we won't be looking for those internal levels because those best momentum moves are when you're targeting those external liquidities when you're targeting those previous day highs previous day lows when you're targeting those weekly highs weekly lows those potential all-time highs level that's when you have those best moves another thing i like to look for is clear higher time frames when you have higher time frames being daily time frame, four hour time frame. When those time frames are setting up nicely and they're consolidating, right? You can expect a big move to happen when you have consolidation on those higher time frames. And I also like to look for a clear setup. So a clear setup on those higher time frames can be a downtrend break. It'd be a break and retest. It can be a cup and handle, right? I want to see a clear setup, right? A clear pattern in combination with a clear draw liquidity and clear higher time frames. And then of course, order flow. When we look at order flow, what we want to see is if the markets are having that relative strength compared to the indices. The tech names that we trade, is it relatively weak or is it relatively strong compared to the Qs and SPY? So if we have this four step checklist, that's when you can look for those A plus opportunities coming into market open. And these are just some of my A plus setup statistics that I've gathered over the past few years. So these statistics are very important and some statistics that I personally gathered for my own A plus setups. And let's go over them. 84% of the time, there's a higher time frame move. So if we know that this is the case, what we're going to be looking for coming into market open is we're going to start off on the higher time frames. If we know that 84% of the time, there's going to be some sort of downtrend break, some sort of higher time frame consolidation break, right? We want to be on those higher time frames to look for those moves towards the upside. 60% of the time, when you miss that first entry, there's a second entry that's just as good, if not better. So a lot of the times when you have these A plus setups, what we have is continuation. So if we miss that first opening drive play towards the upside, right? Do not chase price. Because majority of the time, right, 60% of the time, if we miss that first entry, there will be a second entry that's just as good, if not better. So this just goes to show you that you do not want to FOMO into those A plus setups. You want to look for consolidation or a pullback on the five minute chart. 
for moves towards either the upside or the downside. So we don't have to chase price because 60% of the time, there's a second entry that's good, if not better than the first entry. The ideal hold time for these A plus setups is gonna be one hour. And then the next ideal hold time is end of day. And this is specifically on trending days. A lot of times you'll see that your A plus setups will come when the price is trending. And the best ideal hold time is after you exit, Right, this is based off of my personal statistics over 100 plus trades. The ideal hold time is one hour. So if you're able to capture one of these A plus setups, the ideal exit for the first position should be one hour after you enter in your trade position. One hour is usually the best time to exit. A lot of times when you have momentum straight towards the upside, the market will move for almost one hour either towards the upside with the downside without having any major pullbacks. And then the second best is end of day. So a lot of times you can hold to end of day on these type of positions, right? You always wanna scale on the ways, but you always wanna leave trailers for end of day and potentially, right? A lot of these have higher time frame moves. So a lot of these trades will have continuation the next day. So a lot of these setups can be potential two day swing opportunities as well. And some of my other statistics that I have, right, 75% of the time, the trade occurs around 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So give or take 10, 20 minutes on each side, right, a lot of times the trade will occur around 10 a.m. And as you guys know, right, 10 a.m., there's a lot of liquidity coming to the marketplace, right? The entry is gonna be around 10 a.m., right? 75% of the time. 75% of the time as well, there's a clear edge to one side, right? Either relative weakness or relative strength compared to the Qs. If you're trading Tesla, if you're trading Nvidia, if you're trading AMD, right? 75% of the time, there's a clear edge towards one side. That means you have clear relative strength comparing these tech names to the overall indices, which is the SPY and Qs. And then 70% of the time there's a gap and it either gets filled or has what's called a gap and go or a breakaway gap. These are some of the best trade opportunities, especially on those higher time frames, because that means price is in a hurry towards the upside. So whenever you have a gap and go, we, what you wanna see is a gap above a key resistance level and you wanna see that resistance level now turn into support for continuation towards the upside. Or the other opportunity is that we have a gap and we fill that gap quickly and then we have a big push towards the upside or the downside. So with this being said, now I'm gonna be going on to some examples that I have for us today. So as you can see, we're on my first example here and this is on the Nvidia chart, right? This actually happened last week. It was on Thursday, May the 16th and it was an absolutely beautiful A plus setup on the higher time frame towards the upside. You can see right here, I ended up making over $11,000 on this trade. I had 25 contracts, over 50% net ROI, and ended up making over $11,000 on this trade. Absolutely beautiful trade. I ended up only risking around $3,000 on this one, and ended up making over $11,000 for an absolutely beautiful trade. So as you can see right here, we end up having a perfect entry off this 922 level that I'm gonna be showing you guys in a second. And then we had a sweet push towards the upside. We also had continuation the next day as well. So now let's hop into the charts. So you can see right here, this is what the daily chart was looking like. I just wanna preface by saying I was on YouTube doing my pre-market prep live. I do this every single morning for free at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I go over exactly what I'm looking at coming into the day every single day. And during this day, I was looking at this huge wedge that we have. You can see we're forming this pretty big wedge break, one touch, two touch, three touch, four touch. And then on the bottom as well, one touch, two touch, three touch, four touch as well. So coming into this day, I was looking for a momentum move towards the upside on Nvidia. The reason why was because we have this downtrend break, and if you look onto the one hour time frame as well, right, this looked very bullish. You can now see we're breaking out of this downtrend in the pre market. So it's basically come confirming our thesis towards the upside. So the levels I wanna have marked out is this 922 level. That is your key pivot high from Monday. The other levels I have marked out were on the daily time frame. It was all the way up at this key pivot high, which is at 923. And then I also have this level, which is at 935. And then the next level is obviously this almost all time highs level. So you go back onto the one hour time frame. you can see in the pre-market, right? We're popping above this 922 level. We're breaking the downtrend on the daily chart as well. This is due to CPI. So we have our move up due to CPI. And if you look on the five minute time frame, this is what it looks like, right? So we break above our key resistance level, which is this 922. And now what are we gonna be looking for? We're gonna be looking for a retest of this 922 level, right? So we break above, what we wanna see is a retest. So you see a retest of this level and then we wanna see continuation towards the upside. 
right? So this is what it looks like on the actual one hour chart with the pre-market. I'm gonna be showing you guys the one without the pre-market to show you guys the gap and go that we have. But if we play out the tape here, you can see price on the five minute time frame comes all the way back down, right? Wicks underneath, right? Wicks underneath, but bodies, candles are holding above, right? It wicks all the way back underneath towards your previous day highs, right? But the bodies are closing very bullish. It wicks all the way back towards previous day high, but it's holding the 922 level. That was the key retest level. So this is the level we're gonna be looking to buy entries off of, right? This 922 level. So you can see price ends up tapping back into it one more time. Right, so price ends up tapping back into it one more time, right? Let's go into the one minute time frame now. So you can see we're on the one minute time frame, and once price tapped back into this level, right? That's where I look to enter in my positions because it was tapped back into this 922 level once more. So I ended up buying here. My risk was just a stop below, right? If it closes below this 922 level, that's key, right? It closes below. When I trade options, I have a mental stop. So the mental stop is a close below this level. If you wanna have a hard stop, right? It technically has to be this candle low. Basically a close below this level, you could have a hard stop anywhere between this level or all the way at low of day. In my case, I had a mental stop of a close below 922. And I was looking for those next levels towards the upside, right? High of day. And I was looking for 940. And we also had more levels towards the upside. But you can see price ends up coming back down. As you can see right here, it comes very close to closing underneath that 922 level, right? As I mentioned, right, it's a close underneath this level if you have a mental stop for options. So you can see price wicks. It tries to close underneath, but did not close. So I did not exit. And you can see right here, if we keep playing it, right wicks one more time right tries closing underneath but it's holding this level and you can see right there it ends up pushing back that's where i end up adding onto my position and you can see we end up pushing back towards the upside and you can see on the five minute as well right what what does this look like it looks like price just came back retested this 922 level and it looks like it's going to launch now towards the upside and if we play out the tape on the five minute time frame, you can see it ended up having a nice push towards the upside. I was scaling along the ways. And then my other profit targets, right? This was such a nice move, right? I ended up keep scaling. The next profit targets I had was all the way up at this 948 level. And this was basically my final level intraday was this 948 level on the one hour time frame. And you can see as we play it out, and right there you can see we ended up hitting basically my final profit target for the day and then i ended up leaving some trailers as well for the overnight and this actually ended up being an absolute monster trade because you had continuation towards the upside the next day as well but this is what i want to show you guys this is what it looks like for those a plus setups we have that higher time frame thesis coming into the day right that downtrend break in the pre-market we had that break above this key 922 level and then we used it as a retest coming to market open, right? You can see the buyers step in, and that's why we had an absolutely beautiful trade towards the upside. If I now go on to the regular trading hours, and this looks like a perfect textbook gap and go setup. This is what I talked about, right? 70% of the time, right? There's what's called a gap and go, and it either gets filled or we have a push towards the upside. In this case, we have a gap above a key resistance level we came back down in the very first minute, filled its gap on the one hour time frame, and then we had our candle closure above 922, and that's our go. So that was an absolutely beautiful trade on the higher time frames. Textbook setup, A plus setup, an absolutely beautiful trade. So right here, this is my second example, and this is on AMD. This is all the way back in March 1st. But you guys heard me talk about this example plenty of times, but this was textbook, textbook, A plus setup towards the upside. And I wanna show you guys exactly how I was able to make $14,000. This one, I was only risking 1,500 bucks and then making over 14,000. And ended up absolutely being a monster nine to one risk reward ratio and I wanna talk about it and go over the charts with you guys. Okay, so now we're on the daily chart on AMD and you can kind of see it's the same sort of setup that we had on Nvidia. So right now we're on the weekly chart on AMD and you can see we have a clear retest of this previous all-time highs level. Right, we have a strong push up and now we're consolidating. So we're consolidating above our key levels, which is this 164, you can see all the wicks here. Now we wanna go onto the daily chart. Right, you can see on the daily chart as well, we're holding this 164 level. And now we had a big push towards upside and we're consolidating. It's a lot easier to see on the one hour time frame, but what we have coming into the day is this one hour downtrend break. 
So you can see we had this one hour downtrend break coming into market open. So we have this one hour downtrend break. We also have clear all time highs levels above and we have a clear push up downtrend break and now we're launching in the pre-market so what can we expect is continuation towards the upside on amd right so we're bullish coming into the day now we're going to be looking for any signs of bullishness to take towards the upside so as you can see we're on the one minute time frame and right off the gates you can see we're gapping above our key resistance level and we have a big push towards the upside right this is a very aggressive entry i don't expect anyone to hit it i wasn't able to capture that entry as well but as i said right 60 percent of the time there's going to be an entry a second entry that's just as good if not better so you can see in this case right we have a big push up and then there's only one down close candle right here, which should act as your order block. So you can draw this out, extend it over, and you can see price was forming a downtrend as well. And then we had relative strength as well. Obviously, I can't show you that because I don't have the cues pulled up, but that's where I got in right off this one minute order block with stop just a break below and targets being that all time highs level. And you can see price broke the highs ended up holding this as a retest continuation towards upside and it absolutely ended up being an absolute monster trade this was an a plus setup towards the upside just due to the higher time frames and i'm going to show you guys my live session recorded as well absolutely beautiful trade i walked through this trade live with the whole discord group absolutely insane day on amd as you can see if i show you guys how the rest of the day formed you can see on the five minute time frame, price ended up having a monster move towards upside, ended up leaving trailers, came back down into this order block, and absolutely just launched towards the upside. You can see end up gapping above the next day and having a move towards upside as well. Ended up being an absolutely beautiful trade, and that's just due to the higher time frames, as I always mentioned, right? You can only capture these type of moves if you're on the higher time frames. If you're focused on the lower time frames, then you're not gonna be able to capture these type of moves on a consistent basis. But if you're waiting for those higher time frame breaks, that's when you have those beautiful trades. So now I'm gonna be showing you guys the live session that I had for this trade on AMD. Before I get into the video, I just wanna tell you guys that every single trade that I show you guys is taken live. It's very easy to look back on a chart and describe it in hindsight, but it's another thing to actually execute it in real time. And I pride myself on showing you guys and being as most transparent as possible. I show you guys my screen, my executions, and my trade thesis every single day live in my Discord. So if you guys do wanna join my Discord, this is gonna be the last time you're gonna be able to do so. The Discord is gonna be closing down for the next two months. So if you guys wanna join, make sure to do so in the description below. Oh yeah, and AMD. So yeah, AMD AMD and Tesla, have probably the a couple of the best looking charts. Um, so AMD as well, right? Consolidation after there's a lot of liquidity resting above these, uh, essentially this 180 levels, these 184 levels, right? Essentially we have a big pop-up. Now we have a lot of consolidation, so expect potential continuation on AMD as long as it's gonna hold above. So essentially it had an inside day yesterday and now it's breaking above. So if you're looking for AMD, look for a potential retest of this 178 level coming into open and then you can look to target like 180s and above. If you're trying to get, uh, if you're trying to go long on AMD, right? This is your uh, one minute order block. So if you're looking for a quick scalp, that would be something like this right off this one minute order block. I actually might be in an interested in long position right here on AMD. Okay, yeah, I took a, a position on AMD. The risk is literally just gonna be a break below this candle high. And I'm essentially first profit target, gonna be looking for high day and then potential continuation towards the upside on AMD. Damn, nice move on AMD. Should have continuation once it closes above this high, should have continuation towards uh, this 183 level. So yeah, so basically once we close above this level, essentially this is your five minute uh, down close candle, but I just wanna see AMD just continue higher towards that next key level. Right, so if you're looking to scale, right, you'll look to scale right, right here and then right here and then right here. So you could technically have three profit targets here, which is that this point and this 184, 183.7, which is uh, these highs right here. And then you can leave some for all time highs, which is right here at 184. But if you look at the higher time, let's say you're looking at the higher time frames on AMD, right? 
just based off this chart right here with this candle right here so far on AMD, right? We have clear targets towards the upside, right? That's why you see the relative strength on. So you see the relative strength on AMD, especially intraday wise. So AMD wise, technically, right? This is your down close candle, as I mentioned on the five minute time frame. So price could technically come back down towards this level. I personally like to see the five minute uh, close above uh, this level right here, this 183, but it could potentially come back down and tap into this level. But you can see right here, like this is so this is your down close candle right here on AMD. Technically, this is our full down close candle. You can see that the bodies never, the wicks do the damage, right? But the bodies, look at the bodies tell the story. Look at the candle closures on this. It closed literally right here, right? So this indicates, right, the bodies tell the story. So this indicates to me that uh, AMD is still in a very good position just based off of the five minute time frame, right? Right, so basically 10 minute just hit, 10 o'clock just hit. You see that Q's actually had it like it just pulled back down towards this candle. You can see AMD is basically at the hive day. And you see the bodies right here, right? Not a single body candle closure closed below this one minute order block, right? It wicked a bunch of times. You see right here, one wick, two wicks, three wicks, four wicks, but it never the bodies never closed below this level. I took a couple off more there, but the main target right here is just all-time highs level. I, there should be no reason AMD does not gravitate towards this level right here. And if it does, it's going to absolutely rip. Like it, it could easily rip in the next couple of candles. Just absolutely have a nice move towards the top. Look at this, right? Q's, right? Just basically kind of consolidating, moving its way up slowly. Look at AMD. Just absolute insane relative strength just based off this right here right and the higher time frames oh my goodness the contracts are actually exploding bro contracts are almost up they're two dollars to 360. i took us some more off right there so this is your all-time highs level right here right at this level bro what a uh, absolutely beautiful Look at this, right? Q's, right? A mini pullback, but look at AMD. Absolutely animal. Barely like a super small pullback. But oh my goodness, absolute animal on AMD. But I have uh, tw like 30, 30, 60, 20. So I have 33% of my position left. As, as it keeps going up, I'm just going to keep scaling. Oh my goodness, these contracts are absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, Tesla, I mean, sorry, not Tesla. Uh, AMD, right? All-time highs come back down. Where is it coming back down to? Essentially, this this level right here, this break and retest level, which also coincides with what? Look where it wicked down to, right? It wicked down to this order block, top of this order block, right? But the body candle closed above this retest level, but it wicked down all the way down towards this order block. But obviously, you can see this five minute candle. We're most likely going to have probably a bigger reversal here if you look at the one hour chart, because this was the clear, this was essentially the whole level, was this all time highs level, right? Everyone that bought in, let's say down here, they're going to be looking to sell majority of the position at this all time high. So that's why we're getting a decent reaction off this level. All right. That's why I sold majority of my position, but I still have like 20% left. I'm just going to probably trail this to uh, break even on the rest of the contracts. But you see, look at the five minute time frame, right? Wicks down, body candle closure. What's most likely gonna happen on AMD now is it's just gonna either make its uh, way back higher towards this high, or it's just gonna consolidate a bit and then potentially drop and then move higher. Right, so once, uh, once what's it called? Once AMD closes above this candle, right? Once it closes above the highs, once we have a five minute candle closure, right? This is going to be your order block where you can see price come back down into it and then end up moving higher. But yeah, if you guys don't have any more questions, I'm going to call it a day here. I just have like 
ten percent of my position left. Probably gonna let just let it ride. And I'll have this live session. Good thing I recorded it. Yeah, good thing I recorded it. And then I'll have this up, have a trade review up for you guys. And then I'll see you guys tomorrow for the last session. All right. Take it easy, everyone.